Good morning and welcome to the underground. We're the Isaacs and we're going to do a few songs for you this morning. How long, how long, when will the daughters of Zion rejoice? House of the Lord. When will the truth come out? When will your justice roll down? When will your kingdom come? And evil be undone? When will the wicked kneel and the abused be healed? When will our sisters speak with no more shame or fear? In the house of the Lord Just your ways Teach 
Hello and welcome once again to the underground. I'm Pastor Rashonda. I want to thank you for taking time to join me um, for this today's service. And I want to thank you for just rolling with us, being with us on this journey throughout the year of 2022. I can't believe the year is almost over. But I pray that something that we've done or said here at the underground has been helpful and useful to you. Um, as you continue to try to seek God's face and to live a life that's pleasing in his sight. I want to send a shout out to Lent Girls Rock on my t-shirt here. Thank you for the shirt and thanks to all the young ladies who have been a part of that um, organization. Today, the title of our sermon is The Wisdom of Women. We're going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 1, starting at verse 20. We're going to go about to verse 27, but if you're interested, and I encourage you to take the time to read this for yourself, just go ahead and go all the way to the end of the chapter or to verse 33 to get the full story. I'm going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 through 27. Listen to woman wisdom. Wisdom shouts in the street. In the public square, she raises her voice. Above the noisy crowd, she calls out. At the entrances of the city gates, she has her say. How long will you clueless people love your na naivete? Mockers hold their mocking deer and fools hate knowledge. You should respond when I correct you. Look, I'm pouring out my spirit on you. I'll reveal my words to you. I invited you, but you rejected me. I stretched out my hand to you, but you paid me no attention. You ignored all my advice and you didn't want me to correct you. So I laughed <laughs> at your disaster. 
I'll make fun of you when dread comes over you, when the terror hits you like a hurricane and your disaster comes in like a tornado, when distress and oppression overcome you, then they will call me, but I won't answer. They will seek me, but won't find me. That's um, I ended at verse 28. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And I just say, go ahead on and read the rest of that because it's all good. It talks about what happens when you don't listen to woman wisdom. This passage, we find that wisdom has been assigned a gender that wisdom is being referred to as a female. And not just a female, wisdom is called a woman, indicating that wisdom is not immature or girlish or even naive, but she is a full grown, mature woman. The author has chosen to personify the wisdom of God as an adult, woman, an adult female who goes by the name woman wisdom. For me, this portion of scripture exemplifies the female identity of God. For we know that God is neither male nor female, but both genders are a part of who he is, right? And in Genesis, we recall that it says God made them male and female. We were created in his image, right? So we know that female, the female gender is a part of who God is. And so that gives us a little bit of a clue as to how women should be treated because we are made in the image of God just as much as men are. So it goes on to say here, as I was reading my, my commentary, it says that wisdom is personified as a woman to help, it'll help us to recognize the femi that femininity is a part of the character of God. Many scholars believe that Proverbs were written during the time of Israel's exile, when they were torn away from their homes, from the temple, and from everything they had known. The male-dominated structures and institutions of monarchy and the temple had been crushed by foreign invaders, and they were taken into captivity, unable to return home. Now, the only thing that the people had to hold on to now was the wisdom of their mothers. That was the only thing that could comfort and guide them when their world was turned completely upside down. They had to run back to and reflect on the teaching of the women. When manly might and muscle and tradition and training and discipline fall short, when analytical analysis and logical liturgy could no longer save them and practical problem, problem solving skills could not help them to get out of that, their situation, the Israelites had to turn to the women. They thought about the wisdom that their grandmothers had imparted to them. And they thought about the wisdom of the mothers of the church. Things like, Trouble don't last always, right? <laughs> Anybody ever been told that by a mother in the church or by a grandmother? The wisdom of women that would say, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. The wisdom of the women that might say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. The wisdom of women that would say, do the right thing even when nobody else is looking, right? They had to fall back on the wisdom that was planted within their hearts in childhood by the women who raised them. Women have a different kind of strength. We have a different type of wisdom that sometimes goes unnoticed as 
called being called old wise, old wife's tales. And mm, sometimes we're not seen as being as knowledgeable or as worldly as men are. But women have a different type of wisdom. We have our own special wisdom and a, our type of strength that shows up differently than it does in the male gender. You see, women have a kind of strength that can be underestimated. Women have a kind of intestinal fortitude that shows up when things are going wrong, right? When everything has gone crazy, women somehow are able to show up with a calmness and a wisdom and a strength that may be shocking to those around them. Women have a strength that shows up when everyone else has given up and thrown in the towel. <laughs> women have a kind of wisdom that gives them courage to use their voice and their vote, all right? Women have a kind of wisdom that is rooted in their undying faith. The Bible says that God is the giver of all wisdom. So although women possess this, they are not the source of it. James chapter one, verse five says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives liberally to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. I think it's because women are humble enough to ask God for what they want and need to help their families and their community, God grants special wisdom to women. And not only does he give women who ask wisdom, I believe he gives them a double portion of it because God knows that women will need it in this life. Amen. <laughs> Let's reflect on the scripture a little bit. In the scripture I read, we found that woman wisdom was out in the streets and at the, the city gate. She was calling out to people and trying to get them to heed the her instruction, which really was godly instruction. She was trying to get them to see the errors in their way and to correct their behavior so that they would not experience, experience the consequences of not listening and following godly instructions and directions. Wisdom, the woman gave a rebuke and it went unheeded in the scripture. If you recall, people didn't listen to her. They ignored her. They pushed her aside as she tried to share with them that they had to turn back <laughs> to God, that they were going the wrong way. They had to correct some things in their life and they didn't want to hear it. So they ignored her and they pushed her aside. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced that too as a woman. I think as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, we've probably all experienced that. I don't know if the men got together and had a meeting and said, we're not going to listen to women. We're not going to listen to our wives. I don't know if it's because of the fall. Maybe Adam began to instruct his sons not to listen to women, not to listen to their mother because of what had happened in the garden. I don't know where it happened, but it seems as though when women talk, men just turn a deaf ear. They oftentimes do not listen. I don't know if it's your experience, but I've experienced talking to my sons or my husband, and it seems as though I'm talking to a rock. They're not listening at all to what I'm saying. Their eyes are glued to the tube, right? They're watching TV or playing video games, or they're on the computer, right? They, they're not even tuning in to what I'm saying to them. So sometimes women's words are not well received. Sometimes when people even listen, 
they don't believe what you're telling them. They reject the words that you're saying to them. And that's what happened to woman wisdom here in the scripture. How many times have you tried to instruct a teenager, women? All right, how many times have you tried to instruct a teenager and they said to you, mom, you don't know what you're talking about. Or that would never happen to me. Or <laughs> I know, I know, I already know. You don't have to tell me. I know, right? How many people have been there? I've been there. And so sometimes as a woman, you can get discouraged when you try to share a little bit of wisdom with those around you. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. What do we do when we find that our words sometimes fall on deaf ears? We see that women in our society, for whatever reason, whether it's back from the fall or if maybe it's because of the church, I think sometimes we get some negative messages, some wrong messages about women through our churches, right? Through some religious denominations, they have embraced an idea that women are second-class citizens, right? That they are not equal to men in God's eyes, that women um, cannot be trusted, that women should not be able to operate in roles of authority or power because they can't handle that type of responsibility. There's been a lot of lies told in the church about women. Lord have mercy. The devil has deceived us when it comes to women, making us think that there are certain things that women cannot do, that there are certain spaces and places that women should not operate. Think back, I think back when Hillary Clinton was running for president. And there were many Christian men and women who would not vote for her because they felt that women should not be in a leadership role where she would be able to tell men what to do. Mm, my God. So they wouldn't vote for a woman to be president because they believe that the scripture says women should not be over men. And so there, there's a lot of scripture that maybe make some of those type of comments but that is not from God, all right? That's not God's plan. That was not his design for women because we see here in the scripture that he went so far as to, the, the writer who had wisdom went so far as to give wisdom, the gender assign wisdom, a personality and to make wisdom a woman, to represent a part of who God is. And so if you reject women, you are really rejecting a part of God, right? So we, we don't want to do that. We want to be able to embrace all of God and all of the truth and all of God's children. None of us are lesser in God's eyes. We all are his beloved, right? And God will use all of us and does use all of us. Not long ago, there were comments like a woman's place is in the home, and this was widely accepted. People believed lies that women were not capable in business or military office or even to be uh, entrepreneurs, right? Women were told to focus their time and energies on raising children and keeping up the home where there is value in that, but that's not the only thing that women can do. Right, women can do so much more, and we're needed in all spheres of life. God has used women throughout history to do great things. Women have been used in God's service all throughout the Bible. Oftentimes, we neglect those stories and we look over women when it comes to assigning them roles of responsibility and leadership in our churches and in our businesses. Lord, have mercy on us, forgive us, for that is a sin against God. And not only does it hurt 
our Christian witness, not only does that um, affect our relationship with God, it affects how high we can go in our own businesses and in our own ventures because we need both input. We need input from men and women. Everybody brings a different perspective and a different outlook. And someone who's a different gender, a different cultural background, they may see something or know something that I don't know. So we are better when we all work together. And God has had a way of using women all throughout history to bring about his purposes on the planet. God often uses women to point us back to the truth. When times in our society are toughest, it's women who step in to save the day. Women have come to the rescue throughout history when the nation needed our help the most. There was no other group who has been more consistent and more reliable at coming to the aid of our nation than Black women. <laughs> black women have been known to call for and push for America to live up to her ideals and to make good on all her promises. April Ryan, in a recent book, points out just how significant Black women have been in shaping the trajectory of our country and pointing us in the right direction. Her book is called Black Women Will Save the World. In that book, she had a comment and she said, in spite of the unfathomable pain, torment, and exclusion they faced, Black women always do what needs to be done. Black women use their God-given wisdom to act unselfishly for the good of their families and the nation. April Ryan also shared her reflection as she watched the first black woman being sworn into the Supreme Court. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson made these poignant remarks during that ceremony. And she said, I thank God for delivering me to this point. One can only come this far by faith. <laughs> Amen. How true. Think about it. Think of all the obstacles Black women have had to overcome, yet somehow, some way, we have still endured. We chalk it up to our faith. Black women who are the most underestimated, the most marginalized, the most disrespected, the most neglected group of women in the world, we know where our help comes from. It comes from the Lord. Black women who are the most highly educated group in American society and yet the lowest paid. <laughs> we receive the least amount of opportunities, but somehow, some way, God continues to elevate us in spite of the racism, the sexism, the oppression that we face. We know where our help comes from, and we could only have come this far by faith. Thank God for using Black women and using our wisdom when the world has turned upside down. When women in general are the backbone of our society, we have always been the supporting actors on the scene, behind all the great men and all the great movements of our nation, from the abolition of slavery to reconstruction to the women's suffrage movement and civil rights, women have always organized and invested their time, their energy, and their money in the improvement and the forward movement of this nation. Women were called on again and again to help save America. <laughs> Think about it now. That's not an overstatement. April Ryan points it out in her book over and over again, and she celebrates the women who played a role in that over time. But just as King says, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it always points towards 
what? Justice. Women seem to have been behind the scene pushing that needle and pointing it in the direction of justice time and time and time again. Just this last week, women were called upon in the midterm elections to once again push us forward towards justice, right? Towards what is right. <laughs> Praise God. And women came out. We saw in five states when people were given a choice about whether or not women should have the ability to decide for themselves what happens to their bodies. They voted unanimously. Yes, that women should have the right to choose. And five states enshrined in their state constitution that women should have that right from now on. It should never again be a question whether or not a woman could have the right to choose what happens to her body. Praise God. God has given everyone a choice, right? He doesn't force us to do anything. So why do we think we should do, do that to someone else? So God wants everyone to have an opportunity to choose. Whether you choose good or evil, that's up to you, right? He allows you to make that decision. And not only does he allow you to make that decision, he also will offer you wisdom if you ask for it, to make a good decision, but it's your decision to make. So I thank God for those women who showed up and showed out at the polls and made their voices heard through their vote. All right. Women have wisdom. Women always point us toward what is moral and just and equitable in our society. Wisdom, women have this instinctively. It's a gift from God, this wisdom to be able to discern good from evil and to know right from wrong. Sadly, there are those in our society who don't trust women or their wisdom. We saw that there were many conservative Republican, even people who identify themselves as Christians who felt it was their duty to deny women access to birth control and abortion and to force women to carry pregnancies to term, no matter the circumstances, and even if it endangered that woman's life. Sadly, these folks don't trust the wisdom of women. They don't think women are capable of making a good decision and making a right judgment. How sad, how sad, because we know that that is not the case. And we know that that's not of God. So for whatever you've heard, just know that that is not of God. God doesn't force anyone to do anything against their will. All right, we're going to move on. So let's move on. I'm going to give you a few points of what we can learn from this week and from the scripture. All right. So we're going to move forward. The first thing I want you to know is that women have power when we use our voices. All right. I'm going to say it again. Women have power when we use our voices. Your voice is your God-given ability to choose your voice and using that voice is a human right that should not be denied. The word voice and vote are the same in the Hebrew. The word kol is used to describe voice and vote. They are one in the same. Using both of them wisely will allow you to tap into your God-given power. Point two, if people and nations do not listen to the wisdom of women, they will suffer. If people and nations do not listen to the wisdom of women, they will suffer. Ultimately, you are not rejecting women. You are rejecting God himself. Point three, if people and nations 
do choose to listen to the wisdom of women, they will be blessed. If people and nations choose to listen to the wisdom of women, they will be blessed. They will find security and peace by listening to women's voices. Contrary to popular belief, if we center the voices of poor women, African-American women, Asian women, Native American women, Hispanic women, queer and transgender women, we will be better off. We will have a better sense of what is needed for everyone in our society to be lifted up. By listening to women, by electing women, by promoting women and making room for women at the decision-making tables all across this country, we will begin to understand and be able to better address the real needs in our communities, our organizations, and the nation as a whole. My final point, this is for women. Women, your words, your crying out in the city streets and at the, in the gates, trying to get people's attention, your words are not in vain. Even if you've been rejected, even if you've been neglected, you've been pushed aside, even if you've been ignored, your words are not in vain. Women, listen to me, your words are not in vain. So do not lose heart. Do not give up. Trust God to bring the righteousness of your cause and your truth, the truth in your words to light. He'll do it. Pray for those who reject you. Pray for those who ignore you, for those who push you aside, for those who underestimate you. Pray for them. Pray that they will see the error of their ways and that they will repent. Because if they do not, God will condemn them. Read on in the scripture. I'm not making this up. Pray for them because you don't want to see people suffer because they would not hear the word of God that came through your mouth. All right? Not that you are God, but God uses women. And those who choose to not listen to them will suffer the consequences of not heeding the voice of the women that God has placed in your life. So women, don't lose heart. Don't feel that your work and your labor is in vain because it's not. God is going to bless you and he will bless those who hear what you have to say. Just stay faithful and make sure that the words that you're speaking are what God has put on your heart to say. And God will eventually stir those words up, just like with the children of Israel, when they got into real trouble, they were in exile. That's when they began to remember and think about, what did my mother tell me? What did, what did grandma say? What, what was the wisdom they tried to impart to me? That's when they had to go back to what the women had taught them. It wasn't in the beginning. It wasn't up front. It wasn't when everything was going well. It was when things started to go wrong, when everything was going bad and they had nowhere else to turn to. They began to remember the words of woman wisdom, right? There's women who have been speaking life and speaking love and been speaking words into their children from the time they were babies. And you may not always see those words coming to fruition, but trust God, right? That his word won't return void. And that the things that you taught your children, God will stir it up in them and he'll bring it to their remembrance when they need it. Praise God. There's a scripture for those who still not convinced. They still think that maybe, you know, women shouldn't be heeded. Maybe we shouldn't be listening to these women, right? There's a scripture that, that says, excuse me, it's 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 through 21. It says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love his brother and his sister. We cannot separate 
love of God from love of our neighbor, right? Those two go together. There's no way to separate them. If you love God, then you'll love and you'll care for your neighbor. If you love God, then you'll respect the women that he places in your life. You won't abuse those women. You won't neglect those women because you love God. You have to love your neighbor. You have to love the people that God created. And that includes women. All right. There should be no domestic abuse and there should be no rape and incest. If people say they love God, there's no way that they could do those things. So if I'm speaking to somebody, check yourself before you wreck yourself, all right? If you love God, you have to love the women that God has placed into your life. You have to respect those women. You have to listen to those women. Heed their advice. Listen to their instruction because they're trying to help you save your life. All right. <laughs> we tell our kids all the time, we try to help you save your life. So heed our instruction. It's the same thing for the women that God has placed in your life. As I close, I just want to encourage everyone to make sure that you keep your faith rooted and grounded in the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God allows people the freedom of choice, the wisdom of God, the spirit of God allows people liberty and freedom. It does not try to bind people or control them. If anyone presents to you a gospel that is about control, about manipulation, about hate, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, that you would reject it. Don't fall for the tricks of the enemy. Study God's word for yourself. Understand that the character of God is all about love, right? It's about justice. It's about peace. It's about equity. If anyone comes to you with something different and says God told them, God said this, and it doesn't line up with love, peace, equity, justice, it's not of God. All right? We have to be so careful because in this day and age, people lie daily. They distort the word of God daily and they say the things that they're doing. They're doing is because of their faith in God. But it doesn't line up. It doesn't match up with the character of God. All right? So when you see it, when you hear it, if it doesn't match up with what you know about God, what the scripture says that God is like then we have to reject it. Embrace the women that God have, has blessed you with, the, God, the women that God has placed in your life. I pray that you would embrace them, that you would listen to them, that you would heed their voices, that you would be allies with them, that you would stand with them as they seek to promote freedom and justice and liberty, and peace, and love, I pray that you would stand with the godly, wise women that have been placed all around you. And if any of you ask God for wisdom, just know he will give it to you in abundance. He'll give it to you a double portion. Like I said, he's given to women throughout history who have asked for wisdom. And just be careful now. When you ask God for wisdom, don't be surprised if when it shows up, she looks like me. God bless you. Don't be shocked if women shows up, if wisdom shows up in the image of a woman. All right, that may be just God trying to speak to you. I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that this word minister to your heart and to your mind. Lord, I pray that you would be with each and every person under the sound of my voice on this week. Lord, I pray that you would allow them to go back and reflect on the wisdom of the women in their lives, who spoke into their lives, who sacrificed for them, who prayed for them, who cared for them, who nursed them, who fed them, who protected them. Lord, I pray that you would bless 
your women. Bless women all over this world, Lord Jesus. I pray you continue to lift us up. I pray you continue to give us courage and strength to speak your truth to power. I pray you give us wisdom. Oh, Lord, we need your wisdom in this day and age. I pray you give us wisdom to continue to push our nation, to push our companies, to push our families towards justice, towards liberty, towards equity, towards love. Jesus, bless us now. Keep us in your constant care. I ask it all in your sweet name. Amen. I thank you for joining us. God bless you. Bye. It's been